Hello, this is Tina with You Made That. Today I have my son Josh on and he is going to show us one of his favorite critters and he's going to do a little drawing of that critter today. So let's get right to it. I'm going to introduce Josh. Hey everybody. I'm Josh. Yeah. <laughs> we call him Bug Keeper Josh because Josh has all the interest in all things bugs and snakes and lizards and stuff. <laughs> That's pretty much how to describe it. You just sum it all up with stuff. Yeah. If people yeah. generally don't like it, I probably like it. Yeah. If it makes you like, ew, you like scorpions, he likes it. <laughs> if you think, ew, tarantulas, he likes that too. So. It's the underdog stories. They get me. <laughs> Uh, when he was younger, though, I did have some rules. There was no no tarantulas in my house. So he did not keep those as pets for me. So that's a thing. Okay, but we've got his art pad here, and he's going to show us um, his, his other guest star, I guess, for the video. <laughs> yeah, I brought the dead leaf mantis. This is a Malaysian praying mantis species. It's one of the many mantises that I take care of at home. And when they look like this, you just got to draw them. Let me bring her in front of the art cam so we can see some more detail. But this animal okay. is adapted to looking like a dead dry leaf. She spends a lot of time on the ground or near the forest floor where her camouflage is the most accurate. And the camouflage aspect is something that is really common among praying mantises. And I think it leads to all these just crazy shapes and color combinations. It makes them really artistically interesting. I think this is an animal that was just made to be represented in art. And culturally, all over the world, praying mantises have often featured pretty prominently in religion, in folklore, in art. And I, I think that makes sense just by looking at them. So, they're probably one of the things that I draw the most. I do a lot of fantasy art as well, a lot of animal art, but when I don't know what to draw and I doodle thing, it usually comes down to either a dragon or a mantis. And we're doing a mantis today. You don't have a dragon to show us and draw? I wish. I mean, it's a lot harder to have one on my one hand, you know, and they fly away and paper is flammable. So <laughs> there's a lot of hazards with that. True. Okay. So what are you going to use to draw? I mean, you won't finish the whole drawing, but uh, what are you going right. to use to draw today? I'm being super basic today, and we're getting back to what everybody used in school. Uh, number <laughs> two, just a pencil. <laughs> Eraser totally worn down because I make lots of mistakes, but we have this sweet little triangulaid eraser that's going to be uh, cleaning up for us today. And then I brought what every pencil artist needs to bring, which is just another pencil because if it breaks, you know. Um, so we have two pencils and one eraser and uh, a mantis and an imagination. And that's pretty much everything. I do a lot of digital art as well uh, with the drawing tablet, which is getting to be my preferred way of drawing. It's just not very portable. So a lot of my drawing takes place either at work, at lunch, or on an airplane, or just places where I can't always bring the tablet. And so uh, just doing pencil and paper is probably the most frequent way that I draw. And then usually... Okay, so oh. You mentioned work. Where do you yes. work? Uh, I work at the Fort Worth Zoo. Uh, I'm the invert keeper. Uh, I take care of the insects, the spiders, the scorpions, all of the invertebrates. And then a selection of reptiles and amphibians. Uh, my favorites are the giant tortoises. Uh, but I've got <laughs> all those animals and my responsibility at the zoo. Nice. Okay, yeah. so if anyone wants to follow you um, and check out your bugs and stuff, Please. where can they find you? Uh, on Instagram, I am at bugkeeperjosh. Okay, I'm typing out a banner for that. Thank you. Bug keeper. Every so often you'll get some drawings in there too. Maybe a sculpture. Clay and wire sculpture are my favorites. We'll probably do videos on those later, just so you know. Um, but the 
that's not what I've been prioritizing doing lately. So it's mostly drawings that come up. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to hide that for now. Let's let's get to the Let's drawings because we want to see what you made that. I want to see yeah. what you made. All right. So drawing from life is just, you know, drawing from things that you're actually looking at at the time. And it's probably my favorite method of drawing. It's really humbled me to realize how many mistakes I make when I'm trying to draw from memory. And especially with real animals, memorizing the entire set of features that a real animal has is nearly impossible. You just can't hold that very many things in your brain uh, as far as getting a photorealistic, accurate drawing of an animal without really looking at either pictures of it or the thing itself. And a lot of the drawings that I do are educational in nature. I'll be doing diagrams. I'll be drawing things as similar to real life as they are. And so I really like to be accurate. Having this mantis here, she makes that easy because I can see all, her, all of her. I can turn her around and see different angles. But she also makes that difficult because she is curious about what's going on. And she is uh, an animal that is going to be walking around during a lot of our drawing exercises. So you'll see me try to highlight the parts that I'm drawing here uh, with just the angles bringing her up to the camera. But we're also going to be a little limited by how the animal is going to act. And so if I was really doing a serious drawing, and as I'll probably do when I clean this one up so you guys can see the finished product at the end of the video, I would also be consulting photos, either ones that I've taken or ones that I've found online to help me out with things that are tough to see on a real live animal. Um, being able to draw off of like preserved specimens or museum displays uh, or even like sleeping animals when I draw at the zoo sometimes, that's really helpful for having them not sabotage you by moving away. But as I get started with this one, a lot of you, if you've done pencil drawing before, you know that you have to start out light. And that's what I'm going to do is start out extremely light and gestural and try to figure out the pose that I want to see this mantis in for the finished drawing. So as I draw, I'm going to do the motion lines and do some sweeps and some broad shapes like this. We're going to do the mantis peering at you from upside down. It'll be as though she's climbing on some sticks, which will come in later and looking over at us. And I've actually been doing coloring pages for my Mantis community. Uh, and that's been sort of the inspiration for this drawing today is that once this one gets finished up, I'll be able to refine it a bit and make it into a coloring page that'll be online on our website uh, for all sorts of people, kids and adults, to get to color. Wait Mom, a minute. Have you done any minute. adult coloring books before? Yeah, wait, wait, I didn't know about this. What, yeah. what is this? What's this so, website? <laughs> yeah, so the whole thing with the mantises is that it's a, a growing community of people who are caring for these animals, keeping them as pets for research, for education, all sorts of different reasons. And we have put together a website, the leadership of our little group. So if you want to see some more sweet mantis photography and learn some more about them, you can visit the inprogressmantismeet.com. And that's where we've got the coloring pages too. We did a special Halloween batch. So I put up some pretty funny um, little Halloween ones along with one of my friends. And uh, those, are, those are available there. So they can print out coloring pages? Yeah. At mantismeet.com. That's super cool. I didn't know that. And this picture that you're working on now, you're going to clean up. We're going to post uh, at the end of this video, we're going to post a picture of Josh's finished um, work. And then you can go to mantismeat.com. If your kids love praying mantises like mine did growing up, your kid can color one of these pictures that Josh is drawing. I love yeah. that. I didn't know that. I'm glad we got to plug that today. I wasn't sure if we would. Um, sure, you can we can here, talk about anything. To get back to um, the drawing a little bit, we can see that I'm drawing super light. Most of these lines are not going to survive until the end of the drawing. And 
it's totally okay to use planning lines like this as I'm measuring the distance that these arms go, the, the proportions of the arm segments to each other, where they lie here. If I want them both to be coming out fairly symmetrical, uh, I can totally do a straight line there to go perpendicular to the body line and make sure that one of these isn't way too long compared to the other. Now I'm gonna lift up our little friend here and restrain her. She's actually very good at this. She's lived her whole life with me. And so doing a little hold like this doesn't freak her out too much. And we can see under here, yeah. Oh, you're moving so much today. You can see under here that this line of the outer, outside of the thorax is really jagged. And when she spreads her arms out here, it's going to intersect. Can you spread your arm out like I said? No, you can't. <laughs> Cooperation. But it's going to intersect with this line for the arm here. And I need to figure out where that's going to be. So I'm going to see if I can get her to come up again. There we go and spread out our arms. Yeah, got you. There we go. There we go, now we're calm. Yep, so the little wings right here, those are gonna fall directly behind this arm segment. And that helps me to guide where I need to put these. She'll forgive me for that as long as I don't do it too much. They really dislike being held still but again, the only reason I was able to get away with that without too much jumping and fluttering and clawing was because she has been with me her entire life and gotten really used to coming out and things like that. She actually just went to a Halloween display at an aquarium where we talked about bugs. We had people get to meet them up close, learn about them. And uh, that's one of the other things that I do on the side. Nice. Um, oh, yeah, and I will put uh, links to Josh's Instagram, Bugkeeper Josh, in the description, and also a link to mantismeat.com, uh, that page. Okay, um, gotta say it, a little distracting, but uh, for, Christmas, for Christmas, I'm going to send you a pencil sharpener because <laughs> your pencil. <laughs> okay, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they go through a lot. I don't always keep them sharp. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's one of my things, Josh. I only use Ticonderoga pencils, and I yeah. have to have it sharp. So that's that's just my thing. That's funny. But, I'll take a pencil sharpener for Christmas. That makes it a little easier. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Mom. Well, and it's a whole new thing, drawing something that's moving all the time. Like, I got to say... Who does that? You know, I think it's honestly good for my short term memory a bit too. Like for this eye shape, I turned her around really quick, looked at her face, tried to memorize that eye shape a couple of times, and then had to put it down. And now I'm looking again to make sure that I got it right. And of course, I didn't. But just a few times of looking at it, trying to hold on to that shape in your memory is uh, I think it's a great exercise just as a person uh, to work on your memory a little bit. And then we're gonna have to round. Oh, look at that wing flutter. That was nice. Yeah. It looked like it had an eye. Did they it have, have an have, eye? They have a peacock-like eye spot on the top of the wing there. Um, if yeah. she was feeling threatened, which is actually what she's doing here in this drawing, um, this is the threat display of the mantis where they spread out their arms, they spread out the wings, they try to look really big and colorful. Even though this animal is basically harmless, um, she can't really do anything to hurt me besides a little pinch. Uh, they put on a great big show like this to try to convince predators not to eat them or other mantises to get away from them. So, What kind of prey mantis is she again? She is a dead Sorry. leaf mantis. Uh, Deroplatus desiccata is the Latin name. Uh, but yeah, she's a, a species from Malaysia. And then we've got our claw here. Now, in order to see where on the foreleg the claw actually goes, I'm going to see if I can get her to close it right there. And we'll draw a line going up the foreleg. We'll measure here to here. And we can see that um, 
what I didn't want is for the claw here to end right at the halfway mark because on this animal, this lower claw part, it comes uh, close to like 60% uh, up the arm. And by measuring with my proportions on the page, I can get a, a good sense of how accurate I'm being. I can also throw the pencil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it comes down to about okay. here. And you called her an Sorry, you called her an animal. So yeah. mantises yeah. are animals? They are. It's something that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, but people in casual terms, we tend to use the word animal for mammals. Uh, things with fur, things that give milk, things that are warm-blooded, like, you know, a dog, a cow, a giraffe. Uh, that's how we usually use the word uh, animal. But scientifically, animal means any living thing which grows, eats, moves at some point in its life, reproduces on its own. Uh, and so that is an animal. And so because this mantis grows and eats and moves, uh, she counts as well. They aren't yeah. the same as mammals. They've got a whole lot of differences, um, both in the way that the body is made, the way that they think and move and grow and everything. Uh, but they're still animals. Now, okay. the spines are something that I will go back and count. I'm not going to count them here. I've just roughed them in. Uh, but when I'm going to finish this drawing, I am going to actually count how many we need to have. Uh, in order to be maximally accurate. But I'm not going to focus on that right now because we just don't have the time. Uh, I think that I'm going to have to balance putting in details and playing out, like laying out the whole drawing today because um, we're not going to show the full process. So what I normally like to do is to get the entire drawing planned before I go into detail. Here, I'm excited. It's also it's fun to be talking and drawing, but it also makes me lose a little focus. So we can see that we've, I've gotten a bit in the weeds of detail here with this front leg. And so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave the borders of the thorax, the other arm away. Um, and we're going to get back to the basics here and lay out the rest of the drawing. So I can see when I hold her upside down like this, the legs come out of the body here and here. And if we can get her to actually do a pose similar to this one, I will know where I need to have those legs coming out of. Okay, just kind of memorized that a bit. We're gonna put down a few guiding lines, guiding shapes here to represent the segments of the body. The second one is a lot shorter than this first one down here. And then the abdomen will come down fill out the rest of that space, and it's being foreshortened. Uh, foreshortening is when objects that are in front look a lot bigger, objects that are behind sort of fade away. We can use perspective lines if we wanted to and determine how this is exactly going to fade away. Uh, I don't usually do that much underdrawing, but if I wanted to be perfectly accurate, I would probably use some perspective lines here. Um, but right now, I want to get where these legs come out so that we can plan their angles and we can plan the sticks that are going to go in here as the object the mantises are climbing on. So we've got our leg joints at the base of each of these, one of the legs is going to come off. And then let's start to think, how would it look to have some sticks crossing over? No, don't love that but I do like this. It really fills it out, kind of makes a balance in weight between this right central portion of the drawing and the back sort of receding portion of the drawing. I like having something come up here and make that dividing line. It looks really visually interesting. That's enough for one leg, two legs, but these other legs need somewhere to go. So we're going to have another stick come up kind of hide. Actually, what if it's coming down? I think I like that better. This is the end of a branch, which is coming down and terminating somewhere off the drawing down here. So let's grow another twig off of that branch. 
here. This twig is coming off the main one, which means the main one needs to be a little thicker. There. This comes down. And I'm drawing so light because, again, most of these are going to get erased. We're not going to keep these at all. Um, but they allow us to visualize what we're actually going to put in. And then we'll have some leaves starting to sprout here with the little petioles of the leaves. Maybe it'll be an opposite leafed plant that I'm doing. I usually try to pick a plant for the perching that this animal would live on naturally, uh, make it sort of the original habitat. And then this is also going to need some background. So after I put in these legs, we can put in a little bit of background shapes to plan out maybe where some further back branches can be, um, some other twigs to color in and sort of add a, a scene that fades off into the distance. But we've got our basic branches, so now I'm going to put in the legs. What other question do you have, Mom? Okay, so I like to hear your thought process. Also interesting how you use, you know, the rules of composition in order to get a, a good looking, you know, picture here where the eye goes and all those kinds of things we learned in art school. Um, Rule of thirds, look at that, right. right around where the face is, the juncture of these branches. Okay, uh, interesting that you don't use like artist pencils, you know, um, the hardness and the softness and artist pencils, you're just using a regular number two. Yeah, part of that is because this, the pencil elements won't even survive to the end of the drawing either. Um, I'm going to be covering this over with ink to finish it off. And what I will not honestly do after I ink it is that I'll be transferring it to digital media anyway. So if I wanted to shade it in with values, then I would have to get some artist pencils out. But since the, the pencil here is a means to an end of being able to have a, a polished, clean ink drawing and then a digital drawing after that, and so that's why it's not too important to me. I see. I'm going to wrap the foot around the branch here. She's got her, this is a bit of an awkward pose in real life. A mantis wouldn't keep this pose for very long, but I'm going to wrap the foot around the branch there. Make it look as realistic as possible. And then look at this range of motion. Leg bends up here, comes really close to the body. You've got that there, but then when they spread out, they can go very far back. And this leg is going to be coming very far back here to hold on to an off-screen branch. There's that. Leaves the drawing a bit. I love suggesting that the drawing is actually just a little, a little zoomed-in shot of a larger scene. Back legs are longer than front legs, not by a whole lot, though. And because they're being foreshortened, they're actually going to come out shorter in this drawing. But I want to know where they actually would be if it was all on the same plane. So it's here. Now, are you going to make the mantis smile? Ah, put a little, a little happy face there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Smiling little... turtle? <laughs> yeah. What was that story? Uh, when I was in art class in high school, um, my friend made, she drew some turtles and she made one of them. Well, I think she made them all smile and boy, <laughs> did the teacher get after her. There are no smiling turtles. I felt a little bad for my friend, but yeah, yeah. It wasn't that yeah, kind of class. It's so. so funny. If it was going to be like, you know, super real, you have to, you have to adhere to the animal's facial expressions. You can't have a smiling turtle. But some yeah. of them sure look like they're smiling. I yeah, think that's the, true. The low effort, like dot, dot, smile face. I mean, if I was going to criticize somebody for having an animal smile, it was <laughs> because they drew that. Because that doesn't require anything. One of Josh's <laughs> pet peeves is when people draw um, insects with a nose. Oh, it's disgusting. Yep. <laughs> when I see people, with, you know, they're cartoon bugs for kids shows. Like, man, you had to put in extra effort to make that look bad. You didn't have to draw a nose, but you did. 
<laughs> Let's see, back of the back of this branch here is going to come in. It's going to be very delicate, but we got to have something to fill out this scene. It was hard enough taking little Josh to see Bugs Life from Disney, and uh, the ants didn't have all the legs, and it bothered him, but he got over it because you know. Because Bugs Life is enough of a masterpiece in other ways. <laughs> <laughs> I love right. accuracy. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. here's an important little bit for me to highlight oh. if we want to think about drawing. So check out this mantis again. You can see how the wings flare out to the sides there. And it makes this kind of end of the hourglass shape down here. I know that it makes that shape. I really want to draw the other, you know, corner here, but I don't know if I would actually be able to see it. A lot of the time when we draw, we want to put in all the details that we know about. We want to put in, oh, this dog definitely has four legs. I have to put in the fourth leg, but sometimes they're just not going to be visible. Sometimes it's going to be really minor. And so for this, I really want to see on this mantis, can you see the other part of that wing? Because my suspicion tells me that perspective means it's going to disappear behind the abdomen. So I'm going to turn her around a little bit. This is why I love drawing from life. Turn her around a little bit. And nope, you can't see it. It's gone. Um, so now all I need to do is draw the abdomen here. Mark in where those segment lines are. And do a few little ridges on the sides but I don't need to draw the other side of the wings. Even though I know they're there, we all know that, they're just not visible and that is okay. That's my little bit, so. Nice, no, oh, that's yeah. good. We got a ridge here. I'm really interested actually in seeing from probably the comments, uh, comment by the way, to get this video some more traction, um, seeing how many other people who follow this channel are into just plain old pencil drawing. Because uh, I know mom does a lot of crafting with various media, but the overlap between art art styles isn't always there. Uh, so it'd be really cool to see who else does cards, does painting, does paper craft, and then also just draws like this. Yes, put in the comments if you if you have questions for Josh or if you have your own drawings and uh, you like yeah. to draw. Or even if you're into mantises and all little critters. And if you want to be, you know, I can help you. If you want to be, how to get started with that, follow Josh on Instagram. Yeah. If you want to color mantises, go to mantismeat.com. Um, we're going to let Josh keep drawing. And again, at the end of this video, we're going to have the finished drawing. And then we'll put information in the description of how you can get your own coloring page. And if you're in the uh, Fort Worth area, go to the zoo. Yeah, come see me. <laughs> <laughs> he um, loves to talk about the animals and critters. Oh, so. yes. So right now, I'm going to go back to the details a little bit. And then we're going to finish up for now. You can see okay. that. We've got the drawing mainly laid out. I'm going to find some leaves later on and put some leaves in here off the plants. But the basic pieces of the drawing are all here. And now I want to plot out a little bit more where some of these details are going to go so that it'll be easier on me later. Uh, the main part that I want to look at is the markings on the inside of the front legs and the spines on the inside of the front legs. You can see here, there's some zebra stripes, some black and white going on there, and many different sizes of spines. And those provide great sort of landmarks, uh, places for me to reference in relation to other things on the drawing. So I want to get those spine locations down. I've got my claws with the zebra stripe area sort of blocked out here. It's just going to be a blob for now. And then I can see there's these three very large spines. And that seems to take place right at the halfway mark of the front leg. So I'm going to try and measure out where that halfway mark would be. 
Wow, got it first try. <laughs> I'm so good. Um, <laughs> here for that largest spine coming out like that. That'll get precisely shaped later. And then coming out not exactly parallel to it are these two others. And then this segment was a little bit too far back. Now, a lot of this, what I'm doing right now, sort of judging these proportions, eyeballing things, and then verifying if they're correct, that is practice. I never would want you to feel bad about not being able to get things like this the first try or even the fourth try, because it's just hard. Um, getting that sense for proportions really takes a long time to develop. And I've been drawing since I was single digit, well, I mean, single digit years old, like barely Three. even year old. Um, so that's part of it, is if you're newer at drawing and you're trying to draw real life things, get, cut yourself a lot of slack with the proportions and just try to become very observant and get a good sense for those over time. Okay, we've got that in there. Now, I'm getting a little distracted because there's some really interesting contours here. There are some depressions and projections that if I was shading, it'd be fun. You could get a little highlight here and everything. Um, this part sort of falls into a flatter disc while well, this part is more rounded. And that is cool because I'm not going to be shading this in. I am not going to need to delineate those locations that much. But for coloring pages, which are all just lines, I'm still going to keep a little bit of what that looks like so that it'll suggest where people might want to shade when they color it in, if they want to color it in with a, a high effort shading style. So I'm going to keep a few lines there, then use this eraser to remove the extras a little early. So that way I know which lines I wanted to keep. When I go to finish this drawing later, I need to remember which were even my final decision lines. So we're going to cut out a little bit of this right now and make things easier for me later. Uh, we have forgotten the antennae, forgotten or just passed by. So I'm going to mark out where those, where I think those start. I'm going to get a close look at this cute little face. Yeah. Oh, she pulled back. And then, Hi. yeah, really, she did a lot of walking up on other kids' hands this last weekend. So I don't blame her for wanting a little privacy. If she gets alone time after this, because she deserves it. Oh, yes. Alone time and a snack. It's going to be. Oh, no. What's the snack? Today. What'd you say? What is the snack? Cockroach. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Carnivore things. All right. Now, the last little thing that I'm going to do with us here before we call it and then show the finished product is that I want to just refine this juncture here, the thorax and the, um, and the wings right there. That's going to be an area of fine detail and a lot going on, but I need to simplify it to make it into a reasonable coloring page. So I'm going to darken my lines here around the leg a little bit where I've decided that they're going to be. Move here. your hand down a little bit. Oh, whoops. Oh, yeah, I was focusing completely off there. <laughs> here. Darken that line. Choose where this one's going to be. Darken that. Darken that. And then this one, sometimes you have to be confident with the lines. One your big thumb is, swoosh. Your thumb is in the way. Ah. Okay, there. Okay. It's dark enough. Okay. You can kind of see that here. I'm trying to balance looking at the man. Also. Yeah. But now we got to simplify this anatomy a bit to make it work for a coloring page. So we're going to try and stick to big shapes here. Ignore a few creases, ignore a few wrinkles. But this is definitely more along the lines of an adult coloring book anyway. If I was going to go majorly simplified, I think that would just be a different video topic altogether. It would be how to draw a coloring book. 
Yeah, that you would be good. Get a professional person on for that, you know. <laughs> okay. And then you're going to do one more look here at the underside of your thorax. There we go. How many little teeth are there? One, two, three, four, five. Five little teeth. We're going to radiate those out. One, two, three, four, five, which you can't see. And then draw here, here. Here oh. and know that the others have disappeared, but we're accurate. We've spaced them out. They're there, they're just behind. And then this, and then this. And I think that's enough for now. Okay. So let me. Yeah, that's a really good start. Pass over here see the full picture, and then we'll close this out with an image of the uh, finished product. Yes, okay, let me remove that one. Okay. Great. Ooh. Was I uh, echoing there? Okay, well, thank you, Josh, and we will have to have you on again. You yeah. Drawing something else. I don't know what, but I'm <laughs> sure you have a lot of options. We've got plenty that we could do. I mean, if you want to see some dragons, we can talk about fantasy drawing. If you want to see some more bugs, I mean, all you have to do is say it and I'll do a thousand more. So, yeah. We'll talk okay. about it. it was really good. More video. All, day. all right. Well, so watch for Bug Keeper Josh Instagram link in the description um mantismeat.com website go there check out all the mantises but uh thank you josh for coming on you made that thanks for having me mom <laughs> my pleasure <laughs> okay bye everybody see ya well this is josh's finished drawing and it looks great thank you josh i'd love to have you on again sometime if you like this video, please click like and subscribe, and I will see you next time on You Made That.